Okay, so to start off with, uh, I'd just like to let you know that 80% of everybody in America, at some point in their life, has some back pain. 80%. Uh, the biggest cause of disability, disability payments, disability for people, is back pain. And the costs associated with back pain in the United States have been over $60 billion a year. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, and you know, some of those costs are related to medical intervention, which is very expensive, and um, you know we know how that works, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do first, we're going to go through a couple of things here, and I'm going to see if we can come up with some causes of low back pain, okay? And you have to participate tonight, right? You can't just sit there like a lump on the log. So... So somebody give me a cause of low back pain. Heavy lifting. Lifting, okay. Lifting, all right. Falling off your horse every time you threw you. Okay, I guess I'm thinking more like, because we could think of a thousand things like car accidents, you're lifting, yeah. bending, that's, I'm thinking like strain muscle, um, uh, bulging disc. Um, ver uh, spinal or vertebral dysfunction. I don't even know what that is. Spine out of alignment. Oh, that's a fancy word. Thank it you. is a fa fancy word. But the other fancier word is uh, spinal subluxation. And we're going to talk about that a little bit, a little bit later on, right? So, um, but then there's some other causes for back pain too. And some of those might be like kidney stones, right? Any stones? What else? So infections. Infection. Well, when you're pregnant, a lot of pregnant. I don't know which category that would go in. If that, <laughs> under the musculoskeletal, that could go in probably either one of those. Um, constipation, cancer, broken bone. I mean, there's lots of different causes for back pain. So it's it's really you know it's not a diagnosis. It's kind of like headache. It's not a diagnosis, it's really just the, a description of a symptom that can have many causes. So one of the most important things when you have back pain is to get to the bottom of exactly what the cause is and figure out, you know, if you have a problem that a chiropractor can help you with, or if you have a problem that a medical doctor you need to see a medical doctor for, right? Mm -hmm. So when we do our intake, we always, one of the most important things I tell people is, the best thing we can do today is determine if I can help you. And if I can't help you, we'll see if there's somewhere, something that I can do. That, that will help you. Um, arthritis is another one. Uh, there's just you know, wear and tear over time. Uh, we could put, um, you know, under, under the things like falls, we could put sleeping, you know, how we sleep, activities of daily living. As a matter of fact, those are really, you know, if we, if we wanted to get into the, like the, the most common uh, events that cause back pain, then we would be looking at Things like uh, bad posture. Like if you want to have back pain, just give yourself bad posture, right? Um, bad sleeping habits. And that's one of the things that we're going to show today is how, how to more, most effectively sleep so that you can prevent pain. Um, bad habits with activities of daily living. In other words, how we sit at the computer, how we sit at our desk, how we drive. Um, does anybody in here work? And do this kind of the same thing every day, like sitting at a computer or sitting at a desk or maybe the garden or something. And uh, how we do those things really makes a big difference. Another thing is smoking. Uh, smoking is really uh, a, uh, an important factor to eliminate if you are having spinal or muscular pain. And the reason for that is smoking uh, decreases the blood supply to the muscles and the spine. So it, it inhibits healing by decreasing the blood supply. And then what happens is the tissue and the discs and things like that, over time they can start to dry out or dehydrate and they become brittle and more, uh, more apt to shrink and become what they call desiccated or degenerated discs. So that's a really important thing. Uh, something else that you can do if you really want to have bad back pain is to sit in the same place for many hours at a time without taking a break, right? There's a young guy who we, I just really hoping he's going to be here tonight.
because he's somebody that I was going to kind of use as a postural model because he has really, really, really bad posture. <laughs> and he knows that I've been trying to coach him a little bit and he's doing much better, so I thought he might come up here. But, um, you know, I don't know if you've seen that these days, you know, a lot of kids are like, I mean, holy cow, kids are like, you know, they're, on their, you know, they're on their phone like, there goes their spine. Kids, you know, teenagers, young, young people, young adults, I mean, they're like this. There was a young girl up front like this the other day on her phone. You know, she was here waiting on her mom. I was like, oh my gosh, what? And she's like 16. What, what kind of problems is she going to have by the time she's 25? So things like that are really, really important. And you know, what is good posture? Um, and we want to stand up straight, have our shoulders back. And ideally, our, our ear should be over our shoulder. And I think you know, just about everybody in here has fairly good posture. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. We're going to get on to some of the other. I have some, actually some pretty fun tips on things. I've got some nice handouts for you. Uh, but I, the, the, perfect, the perfect thing is a plumb line or a straight line that runs from the ear to the center of the shoulder, through the hip, and through the heel. So you know, I, get, I tell people one of the best ways that you can tell if you have good posture is to back up to a wall like this and see if your, your, your head hits the, hits the wall. And that feels so exaggerated. And that, that feels exaggerated for me. I mean, honestly, I bend over all day, every day, working on people, right? So, posture like this, it's a good check. It's a good, and, and not like this, not with the chin up, but with the chin level, okay? So you can remember that. So when you get home tonight, and maybe after the class, we can check everybody. We're gonna, gonna be doing like this, and, and this is a great exercise for you know, bringing the shoulders back. and. Uh, Checking your posture. So some of the single best things that you can do are um, the good posture and proper habits at repetitive tasks. Being careful at lifting and that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you a few tips right now that are, uh, I'm going to give you a few tips on bending and lifting and I'm going to tell you about uh, what is the worst thing that you can do for your back. The single worst move you can do and how to avoid that. And we're going to uh, talk about heat and ice. We're going to talk about uh, some back exercises and things to keep in mind uh, when you're doing lifting and that sort of thing. Hopefully you'll walk away with some really, really good information. We're also going to talk about some of the potentially devastating health effects of having a, a, a problem with your spine or your nervous system that's related to, uh, that may or may not be related to back pain. Okay, so, Here's our fun tip, first fun tip for the day, okay? There's two things, a couple things, one thing to remember. Has anybody in here ever had back pain? Raise your hand if you had back pain. Okay, so we're at 100%. So 80% of Americans have had back pain, but the class is at 100%. Gee, go figure. I guess at a back pain class, class most people are going to have had back pain, right? So now you may already know this, but I just think this is a fun tip, and, and I'm going I'm to give it to you when you... If you have back pain, when you sneeze, bend your knees. You ever heard that? Okay. So if you've got if if your back is hurting and you feel a sneeze coming on, you want to bend forward like this to sneeze. Just put a little bit of pressure off. What that does is takes a little bit of pressure off the hamstrings, which pulls on your back. And so when you sneeze, it's much less jarring to your low back. So remember that when you sneeze, bend your knees. Okay? Now the worst thing that you can do, the worst thing that you can possibly do, and if, uh, Kim, can you hand me that board over there that, that's right behind that red board, flat board that's right behind that? Okay. Okay. So the worst possible move you can make, the most dangerous thing you can do, and I'm going to show you why here in just a minute. The most dangerous thing that you can do is bend and lift with a twist. Okay. I'm going to show you why that is in just a minute. So some, some real common examples of that might be somebody the other day told me they were in a small space in their, in their uh, basement and they had to move some things out and they couldn't get their husband to help them. So they were having to, having to do like this, this movement. And a lot of times people will, um, with the trunk of their car, you know, the, if they have something heavy in the trunk of their car, they'll, they'll do like this, you know, to get it out. And that's a really good way to hurt your back, and I'm going to show you why right now. 
Um, get the tissue. So other than breaking your back, aside from you know, a broken bone, probably the most serious thing that you can do for your back is to injure a disc. And I'm just going to show you this briefly because this might help you understand better why bending and twisting is uh, harmful for you. Okay, so the discs are little cushions between the vertebrae. This is a bone, and this is a disc, and this is a bone. And there's 24 bones and you know, 24 discs, or 23 discs, and um, they, uh, they, they really give us our movement. And you can think of a disc kind of like a jelly donut. And it has a, a fibrous outside, and it's a truly jelly-like jelly center. It's called the nucleus pulposus, which means jelly-like center. I love these translations, you know. Uh, so, somebody told me that they went to, they, the, the, their tailbone was hurting, and they went to the medical doctor. He said, I know what's wrong with my back. I said, well, great, what is it? They said, they told me I had coccidemia. I said, do you know what that means? And he says, no. I said, that means your back hurts. It means the tip of your spine hurts. It's like lumbago. It means your lumbars hurt, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really, it's not a diagnosis. It's just another symptom. So anyway, uh, I, I love these translations. So jelly-like center or nucleus pulposus. So wh when we move, this jelly shifts around in here, but the wall should be maintained. The, 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 the uh, structure of the wall is like this. I'm going to draw a bigger disc. It has crisscross fibers, a tough tissue in there. And so when you lean like this, one of those groups of fibers gets stretched and the other is loosened. So when you give it a jerk like that and come up with something heavy, this disc can bulge out. And it can make the disc bulge out like that. And if there's a nerve coming out here, or here, or here, that disc can actually bulge out and hit that nerve. Boy, I tell you what, that really, really hurts. The disc can also bulge into the spinal cord and that really, really, really hurts. Like if it's in your neck, you can have pain in your, you can have numbness in your hands or your feet or anywhere. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really a serious thing. And uh, a lot of times people are in so much pain that they'll just do anything, including surgery, to get it fixed uh, because they don't want to go through you know, what it would take to, to do with natural health. But we can, most of the time, help people with that sort of situation. So the worst thing is if, if this disc actually ruptures, and the gel, you know, ruptures and jelly just spills out and you have little drops of jelly in, in your tissue or inside bumping up your spinal cord, that might be a surgical issue there. There's just not a whole lot you can do, except eventually your body will sometimes absorb it, but you're going to be in a lot of pain for a long time until that happens. And, you know, uh, a lot of people are not, don't have the fortitude, <laughs> they don't have the willpower to go through that sort of thing. So this is, this is why you don't want to bend with the twist. Can you kind of visualize that? Okay, so I, I, won't, I won't stay on that anymore. I guess I'm gonna have to get reading glasses because I'm having to lift my glasses up to read my notes. Uh, I haven't had to do that in a while. I should have just printed them bigger, I guess. So um, I'm gonna show you now. Does anybody here work at a counter or stand up for work? Does anybody iron or wash dishes at the, at the, at the counter? Okay, all right. Um, I was really hoping that we have a woman that's a, a, a checkout at, at Home Depot. It's like, this is such a great tip and it's so easy. This is a, this is a, a trick that housewives learned. Um, uh, it's a trick that housewives learned on how to preserve your back while you're standing in one place. And what they discovered is that if you open the counter, if you open the cabinet under the sink, and you kind of step up like that, and you can, you can bend one foot while you're washing dishes. And you can kind of go back and forth. You can kind of go back and forth while you're doing that. And uh, so, you're, so you kind of got one foot in the counter, right? And 
you can kind of lean up against the counter like that with the rest of you. You're not, not doing like this. Can you see how that's better for you? And so that's good for ironing. It's good for standing up for people who stand up for long periods of time. Just to have a little box or something to stand their foot on. Like the woman who works at the Home Depot, I was going to tell her to just put a little box right there. I looked. I actually went up there to look and look at her work stitch in the other day. I didn't tell her this. I looked, she's got a little shelf down there. She just prop her foot on. So that'll make a huge difference for you when you're doing those simple tasks. Okay. Now the other a couple of other tips I wanted to give you are. Um, like raking and vacuuming, all right? So now we know anything with a twist is potentially dangerous, right? Anything twisting, especially if you're like, like you know, vacuuming is, is not too bad. I usually tell people to kind of rock on their feet when they're vacuuming instead of pulling and twisting with your back. Okay, just kind of rock on your feet and do like that. But raking, I mean, you know, it's like if you try to rake without bending your back and then you're doing like this, right? And I've done that before. So get a leaf blower. <laughs> Don't rake. Just go to go to Walmart and get a twenty-five dollar leaf blower that plugs into the wall, and you know, six dollar long extension cord, and just you know, save your back. It's worth it. But you know, if you have to, if you have to rake, try not to do it with a twist. You know, it's like this motion. You know, you're raking, you're pulling and twisting. That pulling and twist is really something that can get you every time. All right.